A lot of my time in 2013 was taken up with the New South Wales Special Commission of Inquiry, either attending the hearings or I had to provide statements, affidavits. Joanne and her work came under tremendous scrutiny at the State Commission of Inquiry. There were suggestions from the police that there was some sort of conspiracy at play between Detective Chief Inspector Peter Fox and Joanne, but that clearly wasn't the case. The Commission found that. What emerged from the findings was that Joanne's investigative methods, Joanne's motivations uh, had withstood all that scrutiny and she had uh, emerged very much with the, her integrity and the integrity of her work intact. I came home after one long day at the inquiry and picked up my mail and I thought they were bills. And then there was a letter and it had Prime Minister of Australia on the top of it. And I was like, what? And I started reading this extraordinary letter from Julia Gillard that she'd written on the night that she was ousted as Prime Minister, talking about the Royal Commission and it was quite a surreal moment. A first woman Prime Minister writing to me, a journalist for heaven's sake, at such an extraordinary time. What it meant for me was about Julia Gillard as a person, and I'm not saying as a politician. I admire people who show goodwill and grace and generosity. And that's what that letter did, just extraordinary grace. And um, that was what was stunning about it, you know, to think of somebody else at that time the historic significance of it was what struck me. The winner of the 2013 Gold Walkley is Joanne McCarthy. Now this is something I think it's really worth remembering as Joanne McCarthy comes to the stage. Julia Gillard's last act as Prime Minister was to write a letter to Joanne. That letter said, thanks in very large measure to your persistence and courage, the New South Wales Special Commission of Inquiry and the Federal Royal Commission will bring truth and healing to the victims of horrendous abuse and betrayal. There's probably nothing like Joanne's body of work in Australian journalism, and I don't mean that just by the, uh, the depth and the breadth and the length of that investigative work, but the people that it has affected and the way it has affected them. It has brought about you know, societal change, cultural change, and we'll see perhaps legal change. Her work will reverberate long after the headlines uh, are faded. In the face of denials, obfuscation, and threats of legal action, she kept working away, and finally she broke through. No excuse for child abuse. We have a chance to have our stories on the public record, and our families that don't understand why we are the way we are. Part of the task given to us by the terms of reference is to bear witness. I think the Royal Commission is doing outstanding work. I feel good that it's happening. I really do. When we're faced with situations where we can either turn away or we can act, we have to act. It's very important. We've been fighting a long time for this hearing, uh, for the um, Royal Commission. The big question is why is this all happening? We already know from statistics that it is higher in the Catholic Church than in other churches. Child sexual abuse is about abuse of power. Celibacy isn't the cause, but it is a big part of the problem. Priests are supposed to be celibate. The rest of us are only supposed to have sex to make babies. That is ridiculous. The issue is human sexuality. It is a life force in our lives, and the Catholic Church is saying, no, it's not. That flies in the face of everything we know. That, I think, is the big issue that the church has to tackle. But the abuse of power by 
clergy in the church is not confined to child sexual abuse. Oh, okay. The whole issue of priests having secret relationships with adult women is another area that we're just starting to see women speaking about. In those cases that I am directly aware of right now, um, women have gone to the priests at troubled times or for particular spiritual guidance and the priests have actually manipulated that spiritual part of the relationship to justify it moving into a sexual one. That's abusive. This issue of men and women and power and, and children, they're really core cool things for me. A lot of this has been about challenging an idea of men that I think we have to get rid of. Men who see being male as being about holding power. This idea that only men can lead, that's rubbish. We've had institutions that have, I think, had too much power and unscrutinised power because we've accepted that they would act morally and what we're seeing now is clearly that they didn't. It is not the way things should be. It's not the way a lot of men think it should be. Men don't have to be violent. They don't have to abuse power. My background is of strong men. Dad, he's set such a good example. And so has my mother. He's um, the ideal. Oh, I'm getting upset. Just, Dad's a strong, nurturing man. And that's my idea of men. It's better for parents don't know what the kids are doing. Oh, I, I don't want to know anything about what mine did. I just... Joanne and Dad uh, get on famously. You know, they're a lot alike. He's that same unassuming, determined, down-to-earth kind of person. He doesn't drink or smoke. Same with Joanne. Tenacious. You know, Dad could work so hard, you know, tirelessly to, you know, to support all of us kids and still have time at the end of the day, you know, to, to talk to us and, you know, help us out with something at school or whatever. And that's that same sort of um, quality that Joanne has. Well, you've got to get the books and put them in the bag. Oh, OK. I'll, what mu I'll work out what music you're going to, to do. Where's the music machine? Uh, Mitzi, he... Mum and Dad have been incredibly supportive. For them, Catholic Church is about the good works of the church and child sexual abuse is crimes. And so <laughs> for them it's just a no-brainer, which is not to say that the actual process hasn't been distressing for them because it has been. Now I'm putting the crucifix in. That's about fooey. That's it now. No, 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 no. It's got to go that way. Being Catholic is very much part of our lives. I'm a minister to the seniors in our local church and I'm also, like my husband, a pastoral carer in three retirement villages. And we are also scripture teachers in two primary schools, state schools. We have both received papal blessings for our work. We found out about the priests who were pedophiles and included in that was two that we knew. They were involved with our family. Paul Evans officiated the marriage of our youngest daughter and her husband. Um, Jim Fletcher from up in the Thank Hunter you. Valley. Uh, baptised one of our grandsons. I'm always a month off. So there was Paul Evans for you. So what, you chopped him out of the wedding photos? Yeah, well, I'd work with Paul Evans with the youth groups within our parish. It was beyond my comprehension that he could live this double life or had lived this double life. It was a big shock. And he was one of the ones that the, the parishioners, he sort of divided everybody because they were just... We just couldn't he couldn't believe it because no, he was such a quiet man. But Mum's not naive about what has occurred. Mum has actually dealt with this issue herself. I remember when we were young and a man acted inappropriately and she physically put a stop to it immediately. It, it's got to be brought out. They've got to be punished for what they've done. As far as I'm concerned, what she's done, we are very proud of her.
I think the Catholic Church did have an influence on my moral compass simply because of the way my parents acted. The Catholics that I knew were good, decent people, the priests, the nuns. But um, I rejected being Catholic when I was about 17, I think when I moved out of home. A church that does not accommodate women in any leadership roles, even, even as a 17 year old, I found that offensive and stupid. I don't have beliefs spiritual. People start talking spiritual and I, I start sort of, my teeth get on edge. I like science and I like facts. And so my view of the world is mine and um, I'm not trying to thrust it on anybody else. And I'm, I'm fairly brutal in terms of sort of telling people where they can stick their own beliefs, actually. <laughs>